Green Chef Girl. Hi, it's Trixie Mattel. And this episode is, of course, brought to you by Green Chef. You guys know I'm obsessed with Green Chef. Nobody, I feel like I am the spokeswoman. I am the president. I'm the CEO. I am the poster child. I'm the Gerber baby of Green Chef because Green Chef has made me a cook. Now that I live with David and we have to figure out dinner every night, you guys, Green Chef has made me somebody who is capable in the kitchen. Go to greenchef.com slash bald60 and use the code bald60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. You guys, it will change your life. I am 33 years old and I feel like I cook like an adult now thanks to Green Chef. It changed my life. I'm obsessed with it. You'll be obsessed with it too. Go to greenchef.com slash bald60 and use the code bald60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Hi, it's me, a little girl. What's the first thing you do when we wake up? Do you check up on your credit score? Didn't think so, but at Chime, first thing in the morning, that's what they do. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average. All this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started on Chime.com slash bald. That's Chime.com slash bald. Tee hee. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bank Corp Bank or Stride Bank NA. Members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. See Chime.com slash spot me. Chime was the 2021 number one most downloaded banking app in the U.S. according to Aptopia. And we're here. We're here. We are, are, we, are back. We rolling? We're rolling? Well, we never know, do we, Mark? Mark. If that is even your name. Your real Mark. name. Mark. Oh, yeah. there we go. More like Mark uh, not recording. <laughs> Say it again. David's slowly realizing how much my mind is a smattering of like vines and TikToks over the past 10 years. Okay. So the house is dead silent. Maybe I'm in the kitchen at 10 a.m. entering the dishwasher and I'm like, fuck right in the pussy. Yeah, shit like that. <laughs> where I just talk to myself and he's like, what did you say? And I'm like, it's not for you. Yeah. I was for me. insufferable in the studio yesterday. Insufferable. I'm sure I... Went to, left to go to the gym. They were probably like, thank God. Because all I would do is, thanks a lot, bitch. And then I would go, God. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sound effects from KNFW, Nympho Wars, the, the 12 of them that they use every that, single- That they, they, they ep- use incessantly. incessantly yeah. Over and over. Ah, so oh, delicious. So delicious. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's just this- It's- on a loop. If you looked inside the brain, it's just a hamster wheel with those words just uh-huh. rolling around. It's me, so crazy. It's me so here delicious. in the studio alone eating- mm-hmm. Green Chef mm-hmm. and me going, what about you being built like the bus driver <laughs> to myself? Yeah. What about you being and then the me bus? Walking six feet, talking to my other self. Yeah. What about you being built like the bus? What was I doing the other day? I was like, um, the uh, I do that. The, 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 was that the, I think it's probably just from Nympho Wars. It's like, oh, peel. That's from Nympho Wars? It's, a, the Tori, it's an addition. It's a Tori Amos clip. Oh, yes. And I, so I played the uh, Eden and uh, Andrew didn't, they're not Tori Amos fans. They had no idea what it's from. I, I play the song this morning while I'm getting ready and mm-hmm. you called at the exact moment she said peel so she couldn't hear it. Isn't that weird? That's no, psychic. I'm psychic. <laughs> I really, really am. Yesterday, um, David's friend Tom was over, a good friend of ours, and Tom was like, he was like, so Brian. This is his voice. <laughs> I'm just doing his voice. I love him. So, okay, I, I love him. Say, he knows uh, I do his voice. Okay, so okay, whatever. I was gonna say, yeah. Oh, he re- like yeah. three years ago, he goes, so I heard you have an impression of me. And I went, you did? And and like, like, yeah, it's this. And then it was sort of like, don't make me sing. Where I was sure. like, I don't want to do it. Tom. <laughs> but um, he was like, so I heard you're like a little psychic. And I said, I, I sense your tone right now and I can't get into this with yes, you yes. because the instances where I was psychic mm-hmm. would blow your fucking mind. Yeah. So we're not doing this. Yeah, And your cynical ass not believing brain is not about to get blown right yeah. now. Yeah. And then I said, okay, fine. And then I started telling the whole, all of the instances in order. And then he was like, God, <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Um, can I also say this is my, I don't know how to say this diplomatically because I love drinking. And I oh, love yes, yes, yes. having a vodka and yes. owning bars and getting drunk. You love to get your turntina. But I'm taking a little break for, let's be honest, vanity, thinness, productivity. Listen, 
listen, any, all great things. Listen, sometimes. I feel like in drag, you can't discontinue drinking without like a. A coming out party. Yeah. Or like, or like just, an announcement or and something. And I don't want to say I'm quitting. I'm saying me and drinking are on a hiatus. No, no, no. You just say, I don't see her right now. I don't see her right now. I, I love see, her. I didn't see her today. But I hope oh, she's doing well. Yes. God We're bless her. She's out of town. God bless her. Yeah. I still have and her phone I number. And I will revisit her again. Yeah, I have her phone number. But I'm on a break right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we follow each other on MySpace. And I don't, and I just, I what, I've been drinking at least a few, at least once or twice a week for, since I was probably 22, 23. Hold and on. I, 10 hold years phone, ago. Hold the phone a second. Once or twice a week since you were... About 10 years ago. That's a long, that's a lot of drinking. Yeah, it's a lot of listen, drinking. In drag world, that's drinking. Mama, that's, but in no, that's, human world, that's yeah. a lot of drinking. In a, uh, in a drag world, that's like, oh, uh, you eat lunch? Right, you exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm well, just taking funny. a break because I was like, wow, I've been in nightlife and everything so long. Yeah. How, when have I ever taken like a long break? But just also, to do it. yeah, I mean, well, congratulations, wonderful, good luck. Oh, it's, not, you the it's best. not a journey. I'm not bragging to my sober friend about how I quit drinking for three weeks. Well, no, 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 no. Because <laughs> it's, it's funny. To, to, I'm. It's interesting for me to hear because I'm the opposite. I've been on many journeys with every other type of substance besides uh -huh. alcohol, really. Yeah. And I haven't had, I mean, I've gone years and years and years without drinking, but I want to ask you. Oh, you don't perform drunk. I don't ever drink so before that's shows. A big, that's a big um, hurdle not to have to jump over. Well, I've never performed drunk and I never, I don't even have a sip of wine, wine before, before show yeah. ever. So professionally that's whatever. I, so how's but it I been? Love the to drink after shows. Yeah. I love to get on like the tour bus with a giant glass yeah. of white wine. Yeah. Um, to be honest, like it was the routine of like, Oh, it's nighttime. I'll have a drink after dinner or whatever. That was hard to break <laughs> at first where it was like, Oh, this is the time of night where I usually have a drink or something. Right. So what do you just do? Eat some, eat some Cheerios, Skittles? No, it's either, Oh, a glass of water? Delicious no, potable no, water? I love a little bubbly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Starburst. Yeah, yeah. Marijuana. Sugar. Yeah. Louise. Something about marijuana, too. A little puff puff of marijuana. You suddenly don't, you don't want to drink. You don't no, care. You want to eat. You want to eat or you want to like lay down and watch television. Think about stuff. You want to think about stuff. Yeah. I love to play video games a little high, but. Um, Let me ask you this, though. What? I feel like this is the elephant in every room. Alcohol tastes like the cat's ass. I don't think it does. Okay. I, I, yeah. Straight I, vodka, room temp. Oh, no, do I no, want to no, sip no, it? No, no, no. no. You don't want to, you know. But I think therein lies the artistry. Bartenders, mixologists, they oh, take something that again. maybe isn't, it's not Sunny D, right? It's not automatically delicious. Sunny D is my reference for something delicious. I was going to say, that flavor palette is very suspicious now. <laughs> Sunny D yes. is disgusting. Capri Sun. <laughs> But like <laughs> crystal light bartenders and mixologists, they yeah. make those drinks yeah. great by not even real, real bartenders. Yeah. They don't like cover the taste of the alcohol. No, they juggle the, they the, pair it with something yeah. that makes it make sense. Totally. They're like, um, chefs for, yes. for liquids. I mean, I would argue that like, they're like scientists really. They're, uh, they're on the moon. They're, on, they're doing NASA. And I will say my little side effects of not drinking include, I am way less. I've had way less fast food, yeah. way less irresponsible eating. Yeah. I get up a lot earlier. Good decisions. I get up Early a lot riser. earlier. I, no hangover in three or four weeks. Clear head. I don't think I've ever had no hangover for three weeks. Talk about it. I mean, it's lovely. That's the thing that the, the, as you age and the, so there's a, a fabulous, wonderful podcast um, by the uh, Stanford medical university professor, Andrew Huberman, where he goes through the whole thing. He's a pre professor of neuroscience and neurobiology, whatever. Fabulous podcast where they break down alcohol. Mm -hmm. And they just put the kibosh on all these things like a glass of red wine, blah, blah, blah. Alcohol is straight up a poison. It's bad. It's bad boots, the house boots. I love it. Yes, no, 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 no. And I'm not saying it's like, I love plenty of bad things. No, 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 I love it. I love in gay world, gay people drink. I love the culture of drinking in gay yeah. world. I love gay bars. I love all of that. Yeah. But it's also okay once in a while to pump the brakes. Ab but moderation. I will say the last few weeks, me declining drinks, it's never fine. It's always, oh, oh, is what everything it, okay? Yeah, Where I'm so like, it's okay to wear a wig and discontinue drinking. It doesn't mean that you are, you need to be hospitalized. Do you know what I mean? I just think it's funny that when you're a drag queen, you decline a drink. People too. are like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, I'm just, 
No, like you're I'm, either doing a bit or you're about to go to the the, we, the rehab yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I'm like, well, can I have a glass of ice and a CBD gummy? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, we're yeah. Do? I mean, I th- li- oh, listen. The, so I'm pretty much Deepak Chopra now. Uh, I'm gonna say Oprah Winfrey. I'd say Deepak Mother Chopra Teresa. Winfrey. Yeah, yeah, Mother, Mother Teresa, Teresa, Celine Dion, Princess, Princess, Princess Di. Um, um, well, the, so it's been what uh, 13 days, 17 days. Well, New Year's was my big hurrah. I said, you know what? I'm yeah. working New Year's, and I'm going to be done after this. I wonder what the. So I know people do the no nut November. That's disgusting. This was not January related. No, I know, I know. It just happens. But to you're be, like now you're calling me a bandwagoner. No, I'm not. I'm calling you. Um, I'm saying that you're playing against type by following the crowd. Got it. Okay. Um, but no, this is a big. As I'm trying to make a segue into the gym. Um, sure. So like the, the resolution, that old, that old tired chestnut of like, okay, I'm going to quit drinking for a month or I'm going to quit smoking or go to the gym. That stuff is real. People really do this in January, but it's also a good thing. No, no, of course it is. But I'm surprised it's funny to make every- fun of where it's like, Oh, think- the gym is full. It's January. Yeah. All these porkers will be gone <laughs> by March. You know what I mean? I understand that mentality because that is what people think. And it is what when happens. a bunch of new people show up in January at the gym. There's a reason yeah. why gyms run promotions of for New Year's. Yeah, I mean, gyms run promotion for holidays for that reason because they're absolutely. like, um, don't you want to eat like an animal and keep the weight off? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I read a lot of fitness magazines, and there's always articles about strategies about how to keep your physique up. Yeah, Beach let's say body. you're really into training, but you're like, well, I know I'm going to gain weight over Christmas. Mm-hmm. There's, that's always a conversation being had in these health magazines. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand why they don't talk about diet pills. <laughs> they should talk more about what is it? Ephedrine, ephedrine. That's the one that the yeah was outlawed because it, it's cracky, right? Well, pseudo, pseudoephedrine um, is the precursor. That's of meth. what they used to make meth. That's yeah, why they yeah, use yeah. pseudoephed. So fenfen is like that was back in the '90s when people were like popping those and they realized, oh shit, that's just speed. Jesse Pinkman, yeah. <laughs> Walter White, Walter. Quiet. <laughs> but so, by the way, the color symbolism in that show. Yeah. Walter White, he's so pure and then he's corrupted. Jesse Pinkman, pink is youth in that show. And his wife's colors? name is Sky, blue. The crystal meth is blue. Wow. All color symbolism. Second time I watched it, I was like, oh, this whole show is colors. Wow. All of it. The White Lotus. Did you fuck with the White Lotus? Never seen it. I told oh, you I don't watch much. I know. I wish you would, though. Because this is the one fascinating thing about the White Lotus phenomenon was that it seemed to me to be the one, one of the rare things that actually bridged the whole gamut of gayness. Like Dolly Parton. Yeah. Kind of. you know, like, hardcore conservatives and gays come together at the Dolly Parton. Like, the basics and the, the snobs yes. came together for the White Lotus. For the White Lotus. And everything Lotus. in between. Like the hipsters, the basics, the the circuit. I mean, every type of gay. Now came now. Together. What is the White Lotus? So the White Lotus is a limited series on HBO that had two seasons, both featuring but no, Jennifer but why Coolidge. Why is it called that? It's a resort. Also, Mike White re- wrote it and directed it. Okay, it's um, a resort. It's a it's a, a fancy resort. The first one was in Hawaii. The second season is in Sicily. It's fabulous. Only six and seven episodes, respectively, I each season. Watch it. You, I think you would live. I don't know if you would. I don't know, you're Maybe trying. I would. You gotta watch fucking Fleischman, bitch. I gotta watch that. Get in a Fleischman. Okay, I'll I'll, 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 I'll find time for Jesse. For Jesse, I'll watch it. You see him fucking a lot of nude, mama. You see? His, oh my god! You see him fucking sucking, not sucking dick and cock, but fucking women, fucking pussies, fucking right on the pussy. He's gorgeous. He's lovely. He's not gorgeous. He is. He is attractive. I wouldn't say he's classically no. He's not Rock Hudson. No, but in the in the series, so he's a do- divorced doctor, and he's he got married before the apps, and so he's on the market now, and he's discovering that now as an adult man in his probably early forties, as a doctor, he's desired and desirable, and that's a new thing for him. So, oh, like uncoupled. Remember when we watched that, and they were like, "What's Grinder?" Oh my I'm god, old. Like, I know they're like it's frozen in time. I Crazy. think about that show. A lot. I think about that show as much as I think about sex and the shitty. I mean, um, the and just like crap. I think about uncoupled a lot. I'm like, who was this for? Because I old think, gay men, I think it was they for, know about Grinder though. I think it was for me. Old gay men weren't Encino man. They're not coming know, out of ice. We don't. We don't go to bed for ten years in coffins. No. So I don't know what. I don't know what that. But was. they they did it for Sex in the City reboot. It was like these characters were thought out from the '90s. They're like. 
too much woke. It's My giving back to the future. Boy. Yeah, it's like, what? It's so weird. Whereas these people are tastemakers in their time. They would have adapted ahead of the curve. Yeah. They, you know what I mean? It's like so bizarre. But um, you know what I, what I like about the gym, to go back to the gym? Yeah. What I like about fitness in general is that it changes lives. It's the best thing you can do for yourself, et cetera. Mm. What I don't like about, I know that fitness is also a business. Yeah. And what I personally like about running is that it's not behind a paywall. Yeah. Many gyms, trainers, et cetera, so many things are behind a paywall. Of if you make more money, mm. your options to stay healthy are many. Yes. You know, I, I'm not I, saying that's a rule. No, 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 it's not a rule. It is, it is a, an unfortunate sort of feature, but I think it also goes back, it goes even further back to like the way we think about fitness. Right. The fact that we compartmentalize it, we, it is, a, it is an act, something separate. Totally. You don't, you don't access your body. You are your body. You are your body. Like, you know, moving around is free. Yes. In fact, it was not only free, it was it used to be it was required. required. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Wimberly, like, Wimberly told me he was like, think about it. You use your body every day to do work. You rarely pause to work on your body. Yeah. Mind blowing. Well, we we we're now in a situation where we have to say, Oh, wait a minute. I need to use my brain. I need to like move my body. Because the, the 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 structure of our life is so inhuman and non-animal that it's like we have to fit in these activities to keep our body husks from just rotting. Do you know that what I mean? Real, yeah, it's crazy. That is ex- really the way that that makes perfect sense. It's yeah, wild. Yeah. Like this guy Ido Portal is like this um this movement like pioneer, and he's like, I don't want a gym. I don't want equipment. Give me a corner of a room, and I'll show you the best workout of your life. Because it's just it's just moving your body. Uh huh. And like I was raised like that, so like while I love a fancy gym, which I now go to, um, and a story about that because I saw the most attractive man I've ever seen in my life naked two inches from me yesterday, at the gym. Did you see me yesterday? <laughs> What's I, I said there? man. I said oh, man. I, mean, I don't you go to the talk ladies' about room. A tight yeah. cunt <laughs> and wet nipples. Wait, wait. I was in the, so it, I was in the changing room. The women's. It took. <laughs> You were you worked there. You were cleaning the the showers. You were stopping to come up with a swiffer. I was cleaning the toilets with my tongue. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. You know what I love to do? You know those gyms that have lockers where you open them? Yes. You know lockers. <laughs> but no, I would, I love, like, but you know the ones where they give you a key yes. and it's not yours permanently? I yeah. would love to open and be in there and be like, well, how about this one? So, of course, I go into, when I arrive, empty locker room. I choose my locker, blah, blah, blah. When I go to back, change... The two men have chosen the lockers to the left and right of mine. So mm-hmm. we're all in it together. Right. We're all, we're rubbing up against each other. And I look up and I see quite literally like he make you know, my, my uh, porn friends. Yes. This guy makes them all look like kennel club dog rejects. Okay. He is so it's like, I was like, I almost like choked a little bit. You clenched. I clenched. Not even clenched. I like, I seized. Oh, wow. I was like, for just a Who few seconds, play him? no one. That's the problem. He plays himself. He plays himself. Wow. Yeah, like, you know, it's like Joe Manganiello, dog. Brad Pitt, really? Rotten. Yeah, but it was particular to me. Like he was, if I had to create the perfect man, this. What was did it. he look like? He was about f- five ten, dark eyes. No, he was like um, he looked like maybe Italian or Middle Eastern, perhaps. He was like all of Chilean. Skin. Could have been. I'm not sure. Dark hair. That kind of a muscular physique, five ten, perfectly well proportioned, so that he looked like he was a bodybuilder maybe five years ago, and he's getting back to it the last couple of years. Uh-huh. So it's not like super cut, but it's very like it's thick, it's juicy, it's muscular. He had a huge ass, a giant package in his pink panties. He had pink panties on, not like girl ones, but they were briefs, and oh, they were wow. like they were like uh uh. This color? No, Do you this think he color. recognized you? No, no, definitely not. No. I think he was straight. Oh. And, um, he was, and it took my breath away. Mm-hmm. Took my breath away. And he was so beautiful. But probably 28. Good for him. Yeah. Social security number was 016. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happier. And did you like, but did then, you leave him alone? Oh, of course. So then after I seized up, I got snapped to it. And I'm like, holy he went shit. went back to scrubbing the toilet. The, yeah. I was like, I tongued that ball. Yeah. I got the tongue in that ball. <laughs> and I was like, the power of desire can ruin your life in 10 minutes yeah the decisions those snap decisions because you were just lured by that fucking beauty dumb. is real beauty is real if somebody like that Desire. came up to you and said give me the keys to your house I'd you like, just would I'm like i have i have spares 
Yeah, uh, you just uh, was. Uh, yeah. It's just. I it, mean, that's the power of drag, though. Of course, this is the power of uh, the illusion. If you and I go in some place out of drag. People we, cry sometimes. We, no. Oh, we will get treated like bald, <laughs> ugly faggots. Not invisibilized. Yes. Invisible if man. If we go in somewhere in drag, yeah. I think we could pretty much get whatever we wanted. Yeah, it's the Lehman Brothers. It's Wall Street. It's, We're the wolf of Wall Street up in there. Well, we talk about a lot of privileges in the world. We don't talk much about beauty privilege. Pretty privilege. If you're a tall, muscular man. Yeah. You don't have to pay the ugly women tax. Women are putty. You don't have putty. You don't have to play that. You don't have to pay that ugly tax, mama. I've been paying that tax. Yeah. Half time. Now, this is why I put on this little clown suit so I don't have to pay those taxes. Well, I wish that was true. <laughs> you have to pay other kind of taxes. Taxes. Green Chef Girl. Hi, it's Trixie Mattel. And this episode is, of course, brought to you by Green Chef. You guys know I'm obsessed with Green Chef. Nobody, I feel like I am the spokeswoman. I am the president. I'm the CEO. I am the poster child. I am the Gerber baby of Green Chef because Green Chef has made me a cook. Now that I live with David and we have to figure out dinner every night, you guys, Green Chef has made me somebody who is capable in the kitchen. There's great options for every lifestyle. And so since it's the number one meal kit for eating well, it works for you and not the other way around. So you can get keto, vegan, vegetarian, that's me, fast and fit, Mediterranean, gluten-free, it's really amazing, you guys. I have found that if you're a vegetarian person, many types of these services don't have fabulous options. And at Green Chef, I am getting sent meals that A, I can't believe I cooked myself, and B, are extremely fulfilling. I used to get my Green Chefs and I used to cook it and have one night fresh and the next night leftovers. But now that I live with David, it's perfect for two people. I mean, I can get in that kitchen and have a home cooked meal in 30 minutes. One of my other favorite things is that it's sustainable, right? So Green Chef is the only meal kit that is both carbon and plastic offset. We offset 100% of the carbon footprint as well as 100% of the plastic in every box, which is surprising because I know I've told you this before, but the packaging is so durable and shippable and it keeps everything cold. There's been days where I've been at Netflix filming all day and I live in Hollywood where the sun sets obviously from one direction and usually towards that time of day, my front doorstep will get a lot of sun and I will come home and everything in that box will still be cold. It's incredible. My favorite Green Chef recipe is kind of a throwback. There's this broccoli cheese soup that I made that I can't believe I made. I didn't know how to make soup. And I'm also obsessed with these mole roasted carrots. I mean, there was this like uh, lemon ricotta flatbread with like a honey drizzle. I mean, it, it's really opened my mind. My knife skills are better. My sense of what is what food is cooking is better. Just I'm a better cook even when I'm not cooking from a Green Chef recipe. Go to greenchef.com slash bald60 and use the code bald60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. You guys, it will change your life. I am 33 years old and I feel like I cook like an adult now thanks to Green Chef. It changed my life. I'm obsessed with it. You'll be obsessed with it too. Go to greenchef.com slash bald60 and use the code bald60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. So, square space. Today's episode of The Bald and the Beautiful is brought to you by our friends at Squarespace. And I love Squarespace so much because every business from your neighbor's little lemonade stand all the way up to one of the biggest companies in the world, having a great website is worth its weight in gold. And there's nothing better than having the keys to your own vehicle. Thank you. So I know from experience, I've had websites operated and built by other people. I've had them where I build and operate them myself. And I'm telling you, being able to update it, look at the analytics, use the marketing tools, use the e-commerce functions on Squarespace. It puts you in total control of how much money you want to make and how you want to make it. As an artist or a creator or a business, there are things that you don't think about that Squarespace thinks about for you. Let's say you want to see how people are using your website, what kind of traffic, where are they clicking and what are they clicking next and what are they not purchasing? Or let's say you have a product that you want to put out on a whim you can upload the product, use the commerce functions, you can put pictures up. And one of my favorite things about Squarespace is, even if you're not great at updating it, you can link it to your social media channel so that when you tweet or put it something on Instagram, that can be updating on your website. Something else that's great too is there's a video studio function. And I mean, I learned video editing during the pandemic and the video studio function at Squarespace is so effortless, 
so easy, and it helps make engaging video content to share your story. Let's say it's your toenail paintings. Let's say you are, um, you know, cooking hermit crabs in a, a pan, whatever you're doing. Or let's say you are bald and you have a podcast with another bald person. Maybe you need a website. My other favorite thing is it makes it really easy to optimize it for mobile because honestly, I know at Trixie Cosmetics, at least half of our traffic, I know this in the analytics, half our traffic is people on their phones. So it's almost more important that the website looks perfect on a phone. Say it again, sister. It's almost more important that the website looks perfect on a phone. Thank you. Or as Susie Orman would say, it has to look perfect per on a on phone. A phone. <laughs> um, no phone, no business, no money. Ugh. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bald to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Wait, speaking of taxes and numbers. Uh-huh. Happy 100th episode. Happy 100th episode. <laughs> it only took a minute. Happy 100th episode. I can't believe, listen, when we started this, 99 episodes on the wall. I thought we were going to have four. A, a good little shuffle. Yeah, and then pack does. it up, Mary. Yeah, pack it up. You're rotten and you're wretched. Yeah. But I would have never expected to like this as much as I like doing uh and Netflix and touring. I love doing the podcast. I love podcasting. I love it. No, yeah. We're in drag. By the way, don't get used to it. Oh, no, no, no. This is, this is not to predicate that we will be... No. If you want to see us in gowns, lovely gowns, there's a million other things we're in with absolutely, gowns, Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, by the way, you didn't... Have you, have you not yet complimented me on the construction of my lovely gown? I did see it. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> I did see Truth it. Truth teller. I did see it. Now, let's talk about the stitch work here. What about it? <laughs> what about it? See that hole? Sorry, what? <laughs> oh, wait. Let's talk about that. Oh. Alternative hem. <laughs> alternative hem. Inside it's alternative hem. facts. It's alternative hemming. Oh, oh, we didn't cut the thread on that. Listen, nobody's perfect. Jesus. It's very Charlotte Russe. I never said I was the perfect mother. It's um, Charlotte's ruse. Char Charlotte's ruse. The ruse <laughs> is that, you know, she made this dress. and It's actually a very nice dress. Thank you, you make great dresses. Thank you. You know, my dream is for you to start making these dresses for people to buy. That's, that's okay. So that's my dream is for you to monetize this great hobby you have. See, I don't think you know about the world of fashion, fast fashion, sl sweatshop, slavery, and couture. But you could make them for people. But then I wouldn't enjoy it. But that's the secret of life. <laughs> Finding something you love and turning it into an interminable Absolutely. slog. <laughs> yeah. Every part of my life, the seed was something that I loved. Yeah. And now yeah. that seed grew into a tree that I work at. Yeah, that, that literally uh, shields you from any nourishing sunlight. Yes. <laughs> yes. Love it. Um, wait, have we talked resolutions? So we got, so back to resolutions, January, uh -huh. dry January. You're feeling great. You're feeling clear, great. No hangover, clear, wonderful. I mean, I love... I love no hangovers. When I, can I tell you when I have wanted to drink? You have when yeah, I'm somewhere where people are drinking. It. How do you? So how do you do that? Like well, honestly, it's the tough. other day. The other day I went to karaoke. Yeah. It was Orbel Peck's birthday. You did karaoke sober, Mary. I was the only one singing because everyone was waiting to get drunk. I did about five songs in a row. I did Short Dick Man. <laughs> I did Work It by Missy Elliott. Okay, so I we're doing Black Sense by now. Okay. <laughs> oh. Can I say, <laughs> there's entire sections in Missy Elliott yes, that I, know, she's I don't a black think woman. I remembered. Uh -huh. And so in the middle of the rap, I had to stop singing and go, I didn't write this. I didn't write this. I'm yeah, so yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I pick up yeah. because I love this artist. Yeah. But I don't necessarily feel comfortable saying all those words. No, in but the other words such as sex me so good, I say blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Don't I look how, like a Halle, me, by the way, me bald out of drag saying, don't I look like, like a, a Halle, Halle Berry, Berry poster? poster? You don't. No, no, no. But you're enjoying the music. And it's fun. I'll, me stone cold sober watching David and Noah Cyrus sing Rain on Me. Noah Cyrus? With, yeah, and David Silver singing Rain on Me. Wait, Noah, is that a famous person? Yes. Where were you? There. I was at, there at too. The Playboy Mansion? No, it was um, Break Room 86. Have you been there? No. Bitch. I personally don't like karaoke that much, but I love Orville Pack. It's his birthday. I said, we are oh, going. Okay, okay. Gotcha. So we famous go. People. And it's one of those places. I don't know if I can tell their secrets, but. Don't tell their secrets. No, it's a backdoor entrance. Didn't we go to this together? No. Mary, this is where the cast party was. Oh, I, the I one walked, you didn't go I, to. I walked, no, I walked in and then 10 seconds I yeah, left because yeah. it was hard. It was there. Okay. Okay. So, but it's a fun little karaoke spot. Sure. But then no one's singing because everyone's waiting to get drunk. And since I'm not getting drunk, I said, well, I better just sing now because yeah. then I'm off the hook later when everyone's yeah. tipsy and starts putting in five songs at once. Totally. Because everyone totally. gets confident. Yeah. If you get on the dance floor first, you don't have to dance later. So b barely anyone's there. Okay. And I'm singing Rock Lobster. Oh, I love that. Well, no though. one's drunk yet. And I'm like, people at the party. party. Yeah. 
everyone had matching towels. And that's th- great though. Yeah. Like that's if I want to dance, I'll go early to the club and be the first one on the dance floor. I'll get it all out of my system. I'm in bed by eleven. Totally. You and know? then Orville has a bunch of straight friends there, and I'm up there singing. What the fuck is that little thing? You need some tweezers to put that fucking thing away. That has got to be the smallest dick I have ever seen in my whole life. Get the fuck out of here. And Orville's friends are like, if I were doing karaoke, I would be doing Kaya fucking me tonight. And I'd be like, dick growing in my pussy. And I like that. Well, rap is fun because people Well, rap is fun. Well, we talked about that before. Rap is fun. It is people at karaoke sober. Rap is a great way to engage everyone because if you know it, you'll just rap along. Yeah, it's it's, con- it's contagious. Yeah. Yes, everyone's Dick having fun. in my pussy, and I like that. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so Jan- dry January resolutions. Um, I made a resolution to quit smoking. I lasted two and a half minutes. Um, <laughs> but then I, but it's all. I think Orville. Pa- or, sorry, I think um, Juno Birch is currently trying to quit. She tweeted it is very, forty-eight hours without nicotine. It's very inspiring. I bet it's. Well, it's isn't it the type of thing where it's the hardest at first? Well, it, smoking is different than anything. How'd you quit the first time? Smoking is different than anything. So you have smoking, and then you have every other substance. Uh-huh. Okay, because nicotine, while it is an addictive chemical, nicotine in itself is not that harmful. Smoking is carcinogenic. Right. Smoking causes cancer. It's like you don't you don't um you don't taste stand that shit? over a fire like uh, a fire in the forest. And go, do <gasps> you know what I mean? Like yeah. inhaling smoke particles is crazy bad for you. Is edibles better for you than smoking? Edi- but it's different. That's I mean, different. marijuana. Uh, is different. edibles better than smoking? Um, it, you don't ever want to smoke. Period. Smoking, inhaling burnt particles into your is, lungs is not great. Now the kids who are vaping, are, are they vaping doing, is, is not is, great is it better either. Or worse? But, it, but it's different. It's a different bad. It's a Tracy, different what bad. do you think? Is vaping better or worse? It's worse, yeah. right? Oh, no, no. But then edibles? For oh, marijuana, no, edibles, edibles is, is the safest, No, edibles right? is lovely. We're not talking about- Edibles is safest. Edibles, lovely. Love her. Love her. We love edibles. Love everything about her. Yeah, love yeah. It. We don't love uh, machinery with edibles, though. No, but the sickening part is you can get- No, we love- You can get like valuable. a one milligram gummy. Of course. It's lovely. Lovely gal. But like sm- the trick of the smoking cigarettes, the trick of that addiction, it is a trick. Yeah. Because how the fuck can I sleep 12 hours straight if I'm true? Addicted to smoking. How can I stand an 18-hour flight? Do you wake up flight? and the first thing you think about no. is smoking? How can I handle an 18-hour flight to Singapore and not not become unraveled, sweat, Wait, or crazy? I have a question. Do you know what I mean? Well, well, when people quit, let's say they're really coffee addicted and they quit coffee, yeah. sometimes people get, get headaches. headaches. Yes. Do people get headaches from quitting smoking? It, it Perhaps. I have quit from anywhere from one day to two years, many, all the stages in between. Uh-huh. And I'm talking pack a day smoking. Yeah. Mama, it's nothing. It's all in your head. Do you know about that book that makes you quit smoking? Yes. And it. Why are you reading Manhunt when you should be reading that book? I need to read it again. That's It worked for a whole two months. And I quit for two and a half years at one point. Wow. Because you believe, I don't want to get so woo woo, but you believe, you trick yourself into believing that there is relief from this moment. No matter how bad or good or whatever is going on, somewhere in the future, in two seconds or in two hours, I'll be able to be okay. Uh-huh. It's a very deep, grooved delusion. I don't think it's a delusion. I think it's no, like- it's a delusion that you believe because it's fake. What's fake? The fact that it calms you down. It doesn't calm you down. No, no. Oh, that's all fake. But it, oh, but I'm saying believing and recognizing oh, that it's like- super powerful. You will get through it is very real. Oh, yes. That's it's the very only part powerful. of prayer it's a crutch. that's real. It's a crutch. It's the only part of meditation that's real. It's like- you make it happen. It's it's the it's um the power of the mind. The mind is a very powerful tool for good and for evil. Absolutely. But um the ugh, smoking is insidious. But alcohol's rotten. Alcohol's tough. Smoking's tough. I mean, it's it's well, smoking it's is all... pointless. Alcohol's fun. Well, with alcohol, let's say you you drink like a normal straight person. Let's say what is that actually though? What does a normal straight person drink like these days? I think I a normal straight person is probably having maybe a glass of wine on the weekends. I think one glass of wine on the I weekends. I think yeah. I think alcohol. Normal straight people. You got to think people with kids, etc. I don't think they're drinking a lot. You don't know about wine moms. You don't know about alcohol. No, I know about wine. Oh, moms. We're talking normal. We're not normal al- non-alcholic. But I'm seeing a gay world, though. and I love being gay. Why do gay I love people get gay tanked? Well, in gay world, I think it's because Why do people get tanked. You got to imagine. I'm not just going to like analyze here, and I say this as someone with a lot of gay bar experience. Of course, but I think that, in, let's say, 20 years ago, for example, gay bars were the place that you could go be gay. 
And the act to do in a bar is to drink. And so drinking became synonymous with, I'm going to go relax and be myself with my friends. And so drinking becomes part of your the, the fabric of the activity or the way that you can be yourself. Yeah. And show and yourself. All places have fierce mocktails. All places have I, fierce soda yeah. options. Mm-hmm. I just want to rethink personally my instinct to always, yeah, I'll have a drink. It's like, maybe I don't want to, or maybe I have to work the next day, or maybe like, yeah. there's always reasons maybe I don't the want squeeze, to. The squeeze, yeah. the, whatever the expression is. Yeah. I'm, I guess I want to drink with intention and not habit. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Where it's like, oh, this weekend I'm going to a fancy dinner. So I'm going to have, for example, the other night I was out with Lisa, me and her were at dinner and she ordered a, a, a bottle a of Negroni. wine. No, a Vanderpump Rosé. And I was like, oh. this is a moment where if I wasn't trying to prove a point to myself, this is when you have the drink. Yeah. For your little grown up moment. Of course. I mean, rich, successful, beautiful woman. Yeah. What could be wrong with her? Blacking out on a Saturday just because I'm gay. Talk about it. You can brown out. You don't have to black out. No. You know? Gray out. It's me, a little girl. What's the first thing you do when we wake up? I take out my retainer because I have braces because I'm just a little girl. Do you check up on your credit score? Didn't think so. But at Chime, first thing in the morning, that's what they do. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card, you can start to build credit with your own money. I don't have a lot of money because I don't have a job because I'm a little girl. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average. My mom and dad don't live together anymore. All this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started on Chime.com slash bald. That's Chime.com slash bald. Tee hee. Money can't buy happiness, but it can buy toys for a little girl. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bank Corp Bank or Stride Bank NA. Members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. See chime.com slash spot me. Chime was the 2021 number one most downloaded banking app in the U.S. according to Aptopia. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Oh my God, listen, it's January. You know what that means? Resolution time. But guess what? Every day is a wonderful opportunity to become another person, to ditch your problems, to get to achieve your goals. I don't need a calendar day to go to therapy. That's what I'm trying to say. And guess what? I don't even need a car because I have better help, honey. It's online therapy that works. Oh, it works. Let me tell you about it. You can work with a therapist. You can get close to the best version of you online. No more getting in that Toyota Tercel and spending all that time on the 405, the 110, the 110, two, the 200, and you know, the highway, whatever. Listen, I've been to many therapists, some of them great, some of them not so great, but it's just like uh, boyfriends and girlfriends. You play the field and with better help, it's never been so easy to do that. You don't have to get in your car. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It is so convenient, so flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Listen, some people have anxiety and they need therapy, but they have anxiety about going to the therapist. So here you go, BetterHelp. I love therapy because my friends get so sick of me crowing about the same old bullshit, and I need a licensed professional therapist on the computer who can listen and get paid to do it. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash ball today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash bald. I just, I feel, I care more about my health than I ever have. Good, because you are on the... You peaked. I'm on the decline. <laughs> no, you're not. Can the I decline. say this? You're not the decline. I saw pictures of my recently. I was researching pictures of myself in Rocky Horror when I was in my early 20s, mm-hmm. 1920, and I was like, I wish I had been more into fitness then. My body looked so thin, chubby and thin at the same time because thin zero does not act- equal good though. But I'm saying oh. I don't look good. Oh, I said oh, I, I wish I had been into exercise mm-hmm. that young because my body looks like. I'm so gay and frail and afraid to move or be physical at all. I know. You know it's, what I mean? I do. I do. It's the the one thing that there's the one area of my life where there has been unwavering discipline. 
That's really true. Where do you it's, think that comes from? My dad. The, so he was where in. Have, <laughs> shut the fuck no, up. No, it's the thing with that, that Drag Race clip of RuPaul going, oh, where does your sense of humor come from? from? My Probably dad, dad dying. <laughs> It's so funny. It's so. Am I trying? I'm not used to not. Um, Spagliato. It's a Negroni. Oh, I can't do it either. Tracy, you're a lesbian, right? Oh. Were you turned on by the Spagliato Negroni? Um, it was a Negroni. It's Spagliato. A Negroni. Spagliato. With Prosecco. Okay. There you go. Thanks, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you think your your dad made you aware? No. So the the one. So my family, stunning. Show stopping off the charts, Dina Martina. Yeah, your dad's uh, in fabulous shape. No, I but I mean in general, people, character, they're wonderful, couldn't be better people. They were very permissive, very accepting, very open, oh, um, very tolerant. However, there was one rule that my dad, who was very nice and soft and wonderful, would be hard as fucking rock on. Ooh, Which is what? Not hard as a rock. Your dad's hard as a no, rock. hard as nails. You have to move your body. You have to constantly be involved in a anything anything you want. Figure skating, um, soccer, football, uh, karate, gymnastics, dance, anything. But it has to be consistent. It has to be probably three, four, or five times a week, and it has to be always. And it's not it's non negotiable. But I think I mean not to be woo woo. I think that's an expression of love. It your was dad's, of course it was. Your dad's trying to set you up with a lifetime it, of and it you know, worked. It worked. It is. He, now, did he, he laid, mention not smoking cigarettes and doing a little no no he's like drugs smoke, he's like smoke cigarettes do the math do yeah, the coke yeah. do all and put on a wig <laughs> yeah yeah put on a wig you can do dress karate like a girl. but you need to put on a wig <laughs> yeah dress like a girl but you gotta move your body I mean what happens when you smoke crack is you that why your <laughs> is that kidding. why all your numbers were always so physical because you're like dad could be watching mom I know he's watching <laughs> <laughs> and he's hard no 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 I mean like I because I was it was always that like he because he trained um since he was a teenager as a martial artist. It disciplined boots. That down. explains when I met him. He beat the shit out of me. <laughs> he kicks me <laughs> right in the balls. Your dad looks so much like karate you. chucked in the neck. It's yep. like a twin. really. Oh, that's so funny. I think people think your mom looks like you, but after meeting your dad, I'm like, okay, this is your twin. Uh -huh. Dad also looks just my, like my your seven year old sister. twin. Your yep. brother looks just. I mean, families yep. look like each other. I like, get that's so, the whole point. <laughs> but your dad looks Jeans. just like you, and he looks very trim and young. Mama, he's been about the same weight. And mind you, he's had two hips, uh, both hips replaced from kicking so much. You know, roundhouse kicks. Did you talk to your dad about your hips? I sure the fuck did. You're um, in an age where you and your dad are talking about your hips. Mama, we're talking about, I was like, how's the aftercare? I was like, <laughs> he's had three hip replacements. One twice. Catch it. My brain was like, three legs. the third hip? <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then a knee. Yeah. Bones, mom. Karate is Bones not sticking safe. Out. No, in his orthopedist, I think at the first one he was very young, like uh, fifty or under, and his the orthopedic surgeon was like, "Why don't you just stop kicking?" He's like, "I can't." <laughs> wow. Yeah. But anyways, it was like I mean, I was I'm so lucky because that is something I see it all the time. People struggling. It's like, oh, I have to go to the gym. It's like I have to go shovel shit for an hour, or I I can't look sexy. That sucks. Yeah. But you don't have to think like it's don't think about it like that. Cause he never said you have to lift weights. You know, you have, he never told me you have what to, to look do. good. No, no, no. Yeah. It was like, hot. you have to be engaged in a physical discipline. You have to. Uh -huh. And then I found, I had a foundation for movement because I learned to do what I wanted, what felt good. Now I know how to move my body by myself. Right. And it's wonderful. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't think of it as going to the gym. I think about it as my fun time. I think that's a healthy way to look at it. I mean, listen, some people just have an aversion to exercise. And of course. I think that, but I think that that comes from Shovel, yeah. not being made to do these things younger. Yeah. And also like not being encouraged to find something you like. Also fear, t a lot of fear of uh, weakness and um, violence and, you know, boxing, bitch, boxing, football, concussions, injuries. I know. It's like aggression. Well, I mean, it's like, oh, you're having a tooth problem, so you're afraid of the dentist. It's a little bit like, I'm afraid to go to the gym because I'm afraid of even that process. I'm afraid of looking stupid. Yeah. I'm afraid of a room full of machines that I don't even know how to use. There's just so many layers to it. Well, the gym is itself that, now there's a whole thing. It's better actually to do to not do something than to do it incorrectly when it comes to the gym. Oh, do you love the videos of people using machines incorrectly? I saw some bitch bust up her knee, her, watch her knee dislocate because she was using something backwards. 
It was terrifying. Stop. Was this in person? No, no, it was a video. Oh, I was like, oh my she god. She was like making a video trying to pop off for Instagram, showing her using the machine. She was doing it backwards, and her knee went. It's, it's crazy, but it, but uh, never mind that. Like the, uh, it's just like the. If you think about it, like fitness, um, it's just like it's not washing the dishes. No, no, no. It's not washing the dishes. It's not picking your kids up from prison. It's not like you know, putting the dishes back in the woods. It's not like a chore that you have to do. Well, it also depends on where you are in life because when I first went to my first running store, which is real, there's running stores. And Paul's oh, oh, yeah, there's yeah. a running store. Of course, there's all the gear. And I said, well, I'm really excited because I'm doing my first marathon. And he said, I've done 21. And I said, you've done 21 marathons? He goes, yeah. I said, that's crazy. I said, I just did my first one at 30. I said, I wish I would have started younger. He said, you can't think of it that way. Oh because yeah. You don't have the mental fortitude. That's what he said. Yeah, he yeah, said yeah. endurance sports are yeah. all mental. Yeah. And when you're that young, you don't have the, the follow through. Yeah. And I never thought about that before. It's not just about starting early. It's about being in a place yeah. where you have a new feeling about exercise. It's not- Cause I, if I was a straight guy, Imagine. Hard to believe. I wouldn't wear this outfit. Um, <laughs> Not those shoes. Higher Hello. shoes. <laughs> higher shoes. Um, I think I would have done sports through high school. And mm. then I would have entered college being somebody who had spent the last four years using my body all the time. Yeah, yeah. Instead, I st- entered frail and gay with an acoustic guitar. Where it was like, worked for John Mayer. I'm real thin, but not in a good looking way. Yeah. In a in a, in a a pudgy Skinny backwards fat. gay way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't really about looks either. It was like, well... This is a whole world that I don't even know how to begin. It is tough. It's to like, start. and it's like, it's very daunting. It's like, um, people who say I can't do yoga. I'm not flexible. Yeah. It's like, I can't take a shower. I'm too dirty. People say I can't, people are like, I just can't run. And I'm like, well, you, you could though. Yeah. 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 You can't right now. Yeah. Well, people in wheelchairs can't run, but that's like, true. Yeah. 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 But there's different sports for that. Thank you. Mama. The, um, there's extreme, um, Fucking uh, those basketball games. People really get hurt. You know what though? I don't fetishize playing like contact sports. No, I, I that's, at all. That's what I didn't like about karate because I had to, I did it for like. Did you ever get 10 punched years. in karate? Yes, but I don't know. Isn't it like fake? Don't you just like fake land the no, punches? No, I mean we in the the style of karate we did was uh, very basic. It wasn't like it's like Steven Seagal. It wasn't like n- n- nunchucks and shit. It was like punching and kicking. Did you get hurt? Yeah, uh, no, not badly, but it's scary. I don't like punching people or kicking people. You ever fuck them kids up though? Um, Did your dad ever like, this is how you kick and then actually kick a kid in the face? No, he's good. He didn't, oh. he never, you know, with control. But the whole motto of the style of the karate was one punch, one kill. So it's refining the technique to have so much force in one motion that you could um, knock a guy out and have Fa- brain damage. through the face. Not through the face, but crack the skull and brain damage. Absolutely. Do you think in your lifetime... Has your I could do has that. Your training ever come in handy? Do you have no, those reflexes? Because in the moment, if you were pinned down and, and the devil came up and said, "Okay, that's Hitler. I need you to take three strikes to kill him," I absolutely could at least maim him seriously. Wow! With a good, good punch too, and I'd hurt myself too, but my knuckles. But I could, I could really fuck him up with just some pretty decent technique. See, based on the condition of your hands, I figured you were like a cage match fighter or something cuz <laughs> cuz of all the dead skin in this dog fighting. Yeah. Dog fighting. Dog dog fighting. Oh my god. Dog fighting. Dog fighting. Do you like dogs? I I, I really and do. And the brony. I was walking Wait, 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 wait. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was walking, I bumped into a girl with a dog and I said, "I love your dog." And she said, I love you. And I said, no, you don't. And she said, yeah, I was just watching one of your videos this morning oh my and God. I got to pet her dog and I never stop people with dogs because I think they must be so fucking sick of that. No, they're fishing for it. They love it. But people walk with dogs and I used to, Best way to meet my people. ex-boyfriend Kyle, if we saw a dog in the street, he, he would, would stop, get on the ground, get the whole story. stop oh. and be like, hi, when I'm like fuck baby the dog? voice. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this, person, no, this person has headphones in, this person's walking their dog. We don't need to be like, how old? Yeah, what breed? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She's a good girl. Shelter it's like or breeder. The huh? whole rigmarole yeah. of like, yeah. ooh, you're good. Then they're rolling around and, and then I, they have treats in the mouth. It's like, and I would do that, but I have too much respect for the person. Yes. They walk that dog three times a day. Yeah. They're like, I'm just trying to get back to my house. Because shit stained pajamas on. I'm they're trying, trying to. Watch to- <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need to talk about. Let's have that conversation. 
that rage, much have trauma, rage, trauma, female PTSD, <laughs> generational trauma, generational trauma. Let's talk about it. You and I got a call well, last comedy week. Comedy is about <laughs> trauma. And um, last week we got a call. Are you from, sure we didn't talk about this? No, I okay, think okay. what happens is sometimes in this industry. Oh, no, no. What you happened? You get a call as a preliminary. Hey, we just want to see if you guys are available. Yeah. We might have a thing for you. And a lot of times it doesn't pan out. Of most. A lot of times. Most times. A lot of times. Most times. This particular time, we did want to we did want to do something. Let me tell you about my life. Let me tell you about my life and my interests, my hobbies and my my passions. Uh-huh. I am on a break, free as a bird. Uh-huh. Very available. Uh-huh. And when my favorite television show expressed even a modicum of interest in my life and working on and being a part of their universe, of which I have consumed every delicious second multiple times, uh-huh. I'm skeeting through my trousers. Yeah. So when the management or WAP. says, yeah, when, <laughs> so WAP. Yeah. Bucket, mop, and a whole cleaning crew yeah. for this. It was so, a certain program. It was, uh, it could have been, it's a dream. Yeah. A, a, you know, highlight of whatever. Now, the flip side is that, you know what? Maybe I'm grateful for the fact that I don't have to sully the waters of my beautiful pond from which I drink. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, because listen, I don't want to be a part of something I love. I want to watch it. It's fun to be the fan. Exactly. Yes. If they yes. ask you to come throw the first pitch at something, you go, I'd love to because I don't care for baseball. Absolutely. But this is an arena where you're like, it's let, sure. Why don't you guys be the study and share show? Yeah. And I'll be. I'm not giving out communion know. wafers. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm proud devout Catholic. Right. I'm a you're in the, the pew. You're singing the song. Thank you. I'm looking. Yeah. At, yeah. But anyway, so that and it did not pan out. And that's when the suicide watch began. And that's when the news started to look very sexy. And I started to <laughs> yeah. notice how tall buildings were and uh-huh. what are the points of egress uh-huh. and how could I get <laughs> your apartment started flooding from the rain. You're like, well, that's convenient. Yeah. Hmm. I'm only six feet tall. We have to wait a few hours. Yeah. And- can I get that Caesar cyanide? Uh, Caesar cyanide. <laughs> the Caesar salad with cyanide. Can I get that cedar cyanide? Cedar cyanide salad. It was a bummer. It was a bummer. But I that's don't what watch happened. the program. But I, I was really it. excited for us, for you, because it's very rare that a television opportunity comes around that you care about. Yeah. Normally, when you and I get a television opportunity, I get a call from you like this. <sighs> <laughs> do you want to do this? Because I need to emotionally prepare for the fact that we're gonna have to do this. Yeah. yeah. And usually, I go, "Yes, I would." And you go, "All right, what are you gonna wear?" <laughs> <laughs> and you right. tell me, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm like gonna wear a, the other photo. She was like a big blonde wig and probably something green. Of course, you wore black. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I but, know. But no, whenever but, you're like, what are you gonna wear? I'm like, probably a blonde wig and a little '60s outfit. In a Trixie outfit, you say a Trixie outfit. I'm <laughs> like, super outfit. helpful. No, but um, I. It's funny. Rare are the moments where I get excited by prospective uh, professional opportunities. Yeah. Should we just say what this was? It was Hoarders. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. It was um, American Crime Story. Um, <laughs> it was Intervention. <laughs> intervention Hoarders. <laughs> um, <laughs> the uh, No, and I I got the email at one in the morning, or uh-huh. the text from, um, from a representative, and I interpreted wrongly the text as, you are going, to, it's like, you are the winners. Like, <laughs> it's like the difference between you won the lottery versus, hey, there are lottery ticket cards available for purchase at 7 Eleven. Right. That was the difference. And I chose to read it like that. And that's tough. And yeah. we learn. We do learn. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we're destined to repeat the same mistakes over and over until. Well, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was happening. And as the day came closer, I went, well, surely they would have told us by now. And then I was like, I it's know. tomorrow. We haven't yeah. heard. Then so I guess it's not happening. Radio but you know what? That's okay. It's okay. Listen, but hey, you know what? Let's not fetishize. TV is a wonderful opportunity, but it also means like 12 hour days in a wig usually, which oh, is oh, oh, horrible. Oh. And then guess what? The real gag? You would have complained Cut. the whole time. No, no. Cut. It would have been, this Cut. is what would have happened. I meet my idol, snubbed or, or some kind of, I don't, you know, I don't get to meet my idol. Uh-huh. And then it's a 17 hour day. I look like the cat's ass uh-huh. and they cut the fucking scene. And they cut the scene. That's how it works. Yeah. You know what I mean? But so I went to the plant store. Speaking of TV, Mariska Hargitay's brother has a plant store. What did you buy at the plant store? Every single motherfucking plant they had. Like I was a Looney Tune going out of business. Well, plant I saw store. your tweet about like, hey, these might not live. And that's just part of the circle of life. That tweet was about me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so, okay. Do you have an interest in keeping these alive? Are they in the house? Absolutely. I do. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, um, so the, I have this backyard situation that is, 
I wa- I watched the sunsets and cried. We got to do a live pod from back there. Three Outdoor left. sunset the pod. Pergola. The pergola. The last episode. The the sunset pergola. pod. <laughs> it's a three part series because there's three levels. <laughs> letting go. The letting go. The final three episodes of the bald and the beautiful, and we do one on each level as the sun sets. The stages of grief. The stages of death. <laughs> I was in the winter of my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you remember facesofdeath.com? I remember the VHS tapes at fucking video exchange. Is that okay? Uh, I can't I, imagine a lot of that video is um, they don't have sign offs. No, I think I also think it was a little maybe scammy stage. Oh, fakey. Yeah, because if you want to, if you want to, you can go to the dark web, Mary. And I've certainly seen some things that should not be seen. Well, it was almost more nefarious before the internet because certain tapes would cycle. Like, yeah. do you remember bum fights? No. Um, I remember people like in my high school folk? watching bum fights, oh, that's which was a series where they would pay homeless, mentally oh, ill, and God. or drug addicts to do things on camera. Wow. Welcome I don't recall seeing these, but I remember being like, even in this small town in, like in Wisconsin, I was like, is this okay? It's like dog like, fighting. Yeah. It's crazy. It's not okay. No, it's not okay. I want to get a dog. Do you really? I really want to Start pet. with a plant. Well, David doesn't want me to get a bird because he's afraid of birds. And then they I was like, terrifying. well, and then he was like, well, what would you do if I got a, if I wanted a gorilla? I was like, it's not, not the, the same. same thing. It's <laughs> not the same. He goes, because you're afraid of gorillas. What if I wanted a gorilla? I said, just to make a point, I said, well, because I love you, I would sort out my issues and I would let you have yeah. your happiness. It's like, I want to have a child. Well, why don't we just um, start an orphanage? I it's know. Like, not the same thing. God, yeah. Why do they make getting children so difficult? The other night I was up late looking at some, uh, the process of adopting children. Mama, dark web. You go dark web with that stuff. Bum fights. Baby, baby. Or light web. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a version of the dark web that is for positive things, like uh, no, no, babies? No. You go analog. You you um you go down to Target. No, no. You wander around the maternity ward. Listen, a lot of a lot of people they make last. They they don't want those babies because the they're babies perfectly are good. No, no, the pe- babies are fine. The people are just moving on. You just snatch the baby. Nobody asks no questions. Yeah, the Lindenberg baby, snatched right out of the window. That's something different. That's kidnapping. <sighs> so maybe I'll get a dog because if I can't get a bird, have you had a plant? Yeah, we have a plant. I mean, it just sits there. Do you water it? You have to yeah, water it? you have to water it like once a month. Love that. It has a little cup on the side. We water it once a month and that's it. It huh. slowly trickles on its own. That's like a baby. You feed it once every couple of weeks and it just grows. grows. Yeah, I just, I had to tell David, you really I don't get know a dog with your stay schedule? in this relationship if you don't let me get a parakeet. I, if you don't let me go down to Petco and get a budgie, you I'm going to kill you myself. <laughs> I mean, you have to draw the line in the sand sometimes. You have to advocate for your happiness. You have to draw a couple of lines. The lines that say, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> you know, the other day I was on my run and I paused job. my watch to run into a pet store, take a bunch of pictures of birds up close. And I was like, what am I doing? Let me tell Why you what am you're I doing? in the pet store no. photographing Let me tell animals. you what you're doing. I'm 33 no, years No, no, no. Let me tell you what you're doing. You live in a beautiful big house. You have a large tropical outdoor area. Perfect environment for a lovely, intelligent, wonderful bird. Well, you know what I told David? I said, if you won't let me have him inside... We live in paradise. Yes. Would you mind if I got us aviary outdoors you have a with a bunch of finches? Like that a I bunch? Could, and we're talking flocks? Like three or four. Okay. Aviary outdoors so that oh, they basically live out that'd there. That would be gorgeous. That's what I said. He's still scared of birds, though. Scared of what? Ha- he's a tippy hedron? Well, I <laughs> t- He's tipsy hedron. <laughs> okay. But how do we, like... <laughs> he's and, afraid he's going to eat the bird like well, Michelle I told Pfeiffer. him I said how many how many cases of somebody dying from a pet bird happens a year well bird flu zero bird flu mama. how many people get mauled by dogs it oh, happens girl yeah like so I'm like nothing's going to happen to you the worst thing bird. is a bird is going to read you for your outfit well what do you think about well the worst thing is that they pick up human things so that, when I get stuck saying how about you look like the bus driver how, how about you look like the bus saying that to yeah, me that's what I'm saying he's going to start reading imagine I wake up to go make my Lipton tea he's in like, the morning thanks and he a goes, lot bitch <laughs> The bird goes, what about you look like a bus driver? And I go, excuse me. The bird's going to be like, really? Those shoes with that outfit? (laughs) (laughs) That would be great. But what do you think about exposure therapy? Because if I want this bird, I'm going to have to get through David. And um, I don't want to have to pull out the big guns and say, well, I bought this house, bitch. So we're filling it with birds. How would you pull out a regular gun? (laughs) (laughs) But what I might do, exposure therapy. Let's say I let a few Senegal parrots loose in the home. That sounds like sabotage. I have Let's one say better. I get a couple military macaws and lock no, no, them no. in his closet. Exposure. You use your, how about this? Um, 
you pull some strings, okay? Mm -hmm. You're in the industry. Right. You're connected. Right. You get Lana Del Rey or somebody of that nature to come over with their bird. You somebody he loves and admires, Steven Seagal or oh, whoever. I tried that with Vanderpump and she goes, why do you want a bird? Because she loves dogs. And I'm okay. like, I'm like, you're no help. Yeah, get a swan. <laughs> no, but I mean, she, like, oh, I know she has two swans. I'm like, bitch, you have birds. <laughs> no, they don't fly. I, 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 Maybe you should get ducks. You know, her birds are named Hanky and Panky. Those that's, swans. That's cute. That's fun. That's fun. Rhyming. I mean, I've been, you know, the, the, my landlady with the flightless bird who pecked her, who pruned her eyebrows and stuff and beat everybody like they are, uh, an acquired taste, but it's not unre It's not an unreasonable ask for well, long-term they're not dogs partner. and cats, right? They're not, they're not generationally domesticated. They're still no. pretty much wild because people only had birds. So they'll have about hundred years. We intelligente. Inteligente. Yeah. And so they need enrichment. But I mean, what's I the know. worst they're going to do pets. to you? Peck your eyes out. They well, don't do that. I don't think that's going to happen. Don't get a bin chicken like those giant ibises. And what know? about people in LA who have chickens in their backyard? What well, chickens a chicken? You could just, you know, chickens a chicken. I like chickens. Yeah. Chickens are fine. Have you ever held a chicken? I have not. They're, 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 they're chickens. <laughs> I mean, they're big. Well, they can, I'm sure they, they vary in sizes. You know what I'm talking about? The bin chickens, the ibis in um New Bit, Zealand, like in Australia. Do you, just, you remember in Australia how those, the giant beak, crazy fucking birds and the, they're called bin chickens. Oh, with the long curved yes. beak. Terrifying. I took many, Terrifying. I love birds, but I took many videos of those and I said, no, no, no. Mama, those, that's, a lot, that's dinosaur. Scary, very dinosaur. scary. Yeah. Dinosaur bitches. Well, would you ever get a pet? I would. Um. But here's it sounds sometimes so sometimes they stumble into your life. I mean, Andrew has a a dog that elder senior senior but it chihuahua. came upon him through yeah, life. It was bequeathed by a, yeah. a dying relative. But um, I loved my my family dog Raul like deep. His love. name was Raul. Yes, Raul Luis, and he was this. I mean, just. But I was I was a person at home living with my parents. He was like a part of the family. Right. I can't. I, I take umbrage with. Physically, even through a plastic pack, like palpating the feces of an animal. I can't do I it. I know. And that's the And thing. I won't do it. It's like this weird sort of thing. I will poison my body with cigarettes and everything else and be a weirdo wacko, but I won't pick up shit. I'll pick up my own shit. Well, I've had birds in the city, which is not commitment. Bird poop is this big. But I've never had a dog in the city, and I don't know if I could do the poop A Y-Miranda, where it's like touching. a where you're picking up like a Thanksgiving feast with your hand. <laughs> Mary, it's a bread box. disgusting. And if you don't, I'd rather you kill a human being than not pick oh, up dog shit. Um, by the way, I mean, I want to tattle on my neighborhood here. A lot of AstroTurf. <sighs> people let their dog shit on the AstroTurf yeah. and they leave it there. Mm -hmm. This Then it the sun comes out. Sun-dried turds. the shit into the plastic sun -dried grass. Sun-dried turds. And then dinner. you have shit living under plastic grass and every time it gets hot out it rebakes it reheats thanks a lot bitch thanks a lot bitch <laughs> it's so disgusting no it's 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 one of those things like um litter bugs like if, so if you saw somebody in their car throwing a whole thing of empty mcdonald's into the street you'd be like i hate they might as littering. well be a homicidal lunatic not to be crazy i was in milwaukee and i always take the buses there because i know the routes yeah and so i'm waiting for the 52 bus to go over to west Dallas, and there's so much trash collected in this park. And I went, who are these people rolling down the window and throwing shit out the window? My friend, but Dave in high school, he would do that. Throw his McDonald's, <sighs> a whole bag of McDonald's out into the middle of the street in the suburbs. It's bad enough it's that we have landfills to put these things in. Yeah. It's bad enough that we keep yeah, have the, garbage. Yeah, of course. The fact that you're just throwing it out the window. It's very wild. If I was on a date with the guy. And he littered. I would roll out of the car. I tuck and roll. Tuck and 100%. roll. 100%. Tuck and roll. Because I'd rather him say, well, I guess a few years ago I did commit manslaughter and I hit a woman with my car. Or I killed my mom last right. night. I would go, that's okay. <laughs> it's not work like through that. <laughs> we can work through that. I don't get that. Yeah. It's not okay. It's not okay. Don't litter. Last question. What? Before we wind down and wrap up. Would you... Pick up your dog. Say you're you're holding your friend's dog. They have to, went into an emergency room or something uh -huh. for, for 15 minutes. Let's sure. Say. The dog poops uh -huh. on the middle of the street. You have nothing to pick it up. With. Middle of the highway? Nothing. Is it no, a no, the middle, situation? The middle of a um, 
of what situation? A Frogger situation where I'm 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 jumping cars in the highway. No, no, no. You're on a, you're on a Manhattan sidewalk. Okay. Big, medium sized turd right in the square, pristine Upper West Side sidewalk. Uh huh. Nothing to pick it up with. Nothing yeah. at all. What do you do? I go find something. I'm not touching it with my hand. That's not happening. How? But there's nothing. No stores around at all. But if I pick up he, that shit, there is a trash can then right I have there. Shit though. on my hands. So there's, what is that? There's a trash can right there though. I would say oh, this is horrible. I would dig in the trash and find something there's to grab an, it with. It's an empty trash can. Are you trying to get me to pick up the trash with the, the shit with my hands? I'm asking whether you would walk away or you would pick it up with your hands. I'd walk away. Okay. No one's picking up the shit with their hands. <laughs> That's my point. And by the way, what kind of friend am I? If my friend comes out and goes, hey, how was it? Good. Really good. Um, <laughs> I picked up the shit with my hand. Mary, I don't have a friend anymore because they're like, so you're fucking crazy. No, I think they'd be like, you have a friend for life. They'd be like, well, at least I know if I shit, you'll just pick it up. <laughs> I'd be like, I you, shit, you're going to eat it. I'd be like, you owe me. And then I bend over and shit and watch them pick it up. And then I take it and I rub it in my gums. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, honey. Honey diva girl. Goodbye, girl. Goodbye, shitty girl. Goodbye, hey, shitty, shitty girl. Girl, girl do you have another turd in the Hi, street, episode girl. shit girl. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait what? a minute before we go. What? I, okay, you know about The Real Gays of West Hollywood, this show, right? <laughs> I've not watched I, it, so I'm not going to pretend to watch it. I don't even think it. it's on yet. I don't even think it it's on. It is on. on. Oh, but my I'm not God. Watching it because I don't Mama. watch anything. I'm not even watching Drag Race, right? So, oh, my God. I'm not that gay. But recently, I'm like Jasmine Masters. When, I am not that gay. When accounts will post, like, VH1 or whatever will post, like, Monday's got me like, and it's like a gif from that show, people will spam it. Do you know about this? No, no. People will spam these posts. Bring back 90 minute drag race. No one wants this. And they'll post pictures from scat play porn. So these VH1 accounts and stuff are being spammed with <laughs> scat play pictures with people saying, bring back 90 minute drag race, bitch. <laughs> you, you dick, you bitch. dick, bitch. So they're trying to promote like, oh, fuck. Like those little poor clips, interns, little those clips poor from interns. the real gaze of WeHo. And then oh. it's just like videos of women eating shit oh my God. on Twitter. And because they're just like, what about these gays? And the fans are like, what about this shit picture? What about this shit? Isn't that crazy? What about this shit? What about this bitch? What about this fucking feces bitch? Thanks a lot, bitch. Thanks a lot, bitch. It's like, uh, hey, did you want to watch Real Gays of Hollywood? No. no but did you want to watch this shit eating clip where this girl's fucking herself with a turd? There was a video of a girl shitting and it went straight in the other girl's mouth. <laughs> I'm going to die. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Anyway, oh, let's get we, out of we here. We gotta watch Real Gays of Buho. Okay. We gotta I, watch it. I, you couldn't. Gundam, We're supporting the girls. Which girls? The girls. The girls. The divas the and the real dolls. Girls of we, we Jonathan have. Bennett's husband is on it. Todrick's on it. Okay. I don't think I know anybody else. Um, I there was some there was a scandal around it. We can talk about it next episode, but somebody was allegedly booted off for having an oh, OnlyFans. Chris Salvatore. On Chris, it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So nice. I met him a couple times. Sweetheart. So very funny. very very sexy. In Mama. person? Sexy. He's hot in pictures. Sexy. He's hot in movies. Yeah. In person. Yeah. Sexy. I was like, yeah. Uh, the eyes, the face, everything. And Model. he's so nice that everything he says, uh, this is that thing that sometimes porn people have where they have so much charisma that when they're talking to you, they make you feel like you're the most important person in the world. Yeah. That's called being a, it's charm. charm. Yeah. He had that. Charm. But what about eating shit? <laughs> we gotta go eat some we shit. We gotta go eat some shit. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.